digital dementia. This is a real medical term right now. This is the idea that we're outsourcing our brains to our smart devices. We're so reliant on our smartphones that our smartphones are making us stupid. Does that make sense? That I mean, it's convenient. I don't want to. I, I don't want to memorize 500 phone numbers, right? Nobody wants to do that. But we've lost the ability to memorize one. Like if I give you a seven-digit number now, how difficult、I'm, would it be? You find that kind of difficult to memorize, like a phone number that you used to do years ago? Yes or yes? Because we've, our, if I take my arm, I put it into a sling for six months, does it stay the same? Would it even grow stronger? It would what? It would atrophy and grow weaker. Same thing with your mental muscles. If you're relying on your phone to keep your schedules, your to-dos, do simple. I went out to dinner with ten people、uh, recently. There was a ten of us, and three people at the end pulled out their phones to divide the check, the bill by ten. Can I borrow someone's phone, please? Anyone? Thank you. Okay. There is a subconscious reaction to these devices when we use them. Okay. What if I were to hold my phone while I'm talking to you? I'm not checking it. It's not buzzing. It's not beeping. I'm not even. I'm nothing. I'm just holding it. Do you feel at this moment that you are the most important thing to me right now? No, you do not, because there is a subconscious reaction we have to the device. When it is out, it makes the people around us feel that they are less important. When we show up to a meeting, or a lunch, or a dinner, with our colleagues, our clients, or our friends, or our families. And we put the phone on the table. We have announced to everyone in the room that they are not that important to us. And by the way, putting the phone upside down is not more polite. <laughs> My favorite one is in the meeting or at a lunch with someone that the phone will ring and the caller ID will pop up and they will go, "I'm not going to get it." Oh, so magnanimous! Oh, I'm lucky to eat with you today. Or they could just put the damn thing away. You can tell how addicted we are when somebody pulls out their phone when you're with them. How uncomfortable does that make us feel? You're walking down the street with someone, they pull their phone out. We feel stupid. So what do we do? We pull our phones out. We're so addicted. Somebody goes to the bathroom when we're at dinner, and what do we have to sit there by ourselves? God forbid we should look around the room for five minutes. We pull our phones out. Meetings, awful. What do we do when a meeting happens? Right, everybody's sitting waiting for the meeting to start. Bob's running a few minutes late. Bob's here. Okay, start the meeting. Do you know when relationships are built? All that in between time. Thank you very much. Parents have to intervene. We have to stop giving our kids free access to social media and, and phones at young ages. They are not ready for it. Their minds cannot cope with the dopamine. Balance is fine. You can give a kid a phone, but they can't use it in their bedroom. They can't have it at the dinner table. They can't take it to school. They can only have it up to a certain hour, and you take it away. They're children. You can take the phone away. We've got to intervene. This, this, the science is alarming. They did、uh, experiments on mice, where they they did the multitasking. They they changed the they changed they put flashing lights to mimic going from the computer to the cell phone, the computer to the cell phone to the TV. The mice that were exposed to the changing lights. It took them three times longer to solve a maze than the mice that weren't, and the damage was permanent. It didn't improve when they stopped the lights.